All right, at this time, I'd like to call the meeting to order. We need to review and approve the agenda. I need a motion to approve the agenda. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Review and approve the minutes from June of 2019. Nope. Table that reviewing the minutes until our next meeting. Okay, second. All in favor say aye. aye. Okay, table. Um, review and approve financial reports. Yes. Okay, we'll just report through that. Um, general fund, we got a cash balance of just over $2 million. Uh, capital 125268 one second sale, <coughs> debt service, 4,588, management, 219,814, nutrition, 65,401, activity, 77,4420, and trust agency, 139,425. Mr. Lander, the general fund cash balance is not part of the balance. That will come to later. Okay. Be like September. Okay. So that is, sorry, what did you say? The general fund balance is not the same as the unspent balance. And we'll have our unspent balance after the should, CAR. Should, it's due September 15th, right? Yeah. It could be <coughs> adjusted. Okay. Any questions on the bills? I, I got a couple. Um, it says computer info concepts. Student info system for fifteen thousand. That's our student information. That's the uh, info campus. Okay, so that's a yearly yep. fee. Um, then I have the Alexandria Library license. The library. That's the library that's system for checking out books and and uh, and doing And books. so that's a yearly fee. So yes. Um, this is Power School Group. Power school. That is the talent end of these for evaluation software. We have Kathy Unslow here. She is running for the local seat on the AEA board. Thank you for coming. Hi, I'm Kathy Unslow. Um, so you know a little of my background. The reason I'm here is Dr. North has decided not to run again. So um, I and I have spoken with him. I'm friends with George, and um, so I'm going to uh, run for his office. I don't know that I have anyone running against me, but um, um, I am here, and I would like you to see a face with the name. Um, when it comes time to vote, you'll get a ballot. All schools that represent my area, and you're one of them, will get a ballot. You'll get That will change this year to the November election. It used to be the ADA's were the September election, but now we'll go to November. So you'll get a ballot in around September, and then you will vote on that. <laughs> and um, I would like you to vote for me. Again, my name's Kathy Enslin. Um, my husband and I farm over south of Dumont, and um, 
I have been in education four years. I was a teacher, then a principal, and then a superintendent for over 20 years. And I retired, and then they hired me at the ADA. I was assistant chief with Dr. North. That's why I know George so well. Um, and then I retired from there, and now I work as a school consultant with school administrators of Iowa. And I mentor new superintendents in the state, and um, I'm part of a, I'm a coach, like an instructional coach for principals around the state. I work with 10 principals, and then I also teach leadership classes in seven of the nine EAs. So I'm all over the state. And one thing I do want to compliment you guys on, and I don't know if it's you or the city, but I go to a lot of towns and a lot of schools, and I can never find a school. And there's, the signage for this town was wonderful. It's like by the block. And so I just, whoever's in charge of that, good job. I want to say that. Um, in terms of uh, my role with the AEA, I don't think you'll see a lot of difference with them when George was here. I think George did a great job, to be honest. And I know he's from your district. But I've said this to every board I've talked to. Um, and I want to continue uh, being involved. And I also, when I was superintendent, I've always been in smaller schools. I've had a, a soft spot for small schools and stayed there. Even though I probably could have gone bigger, I decided to stay. Um, and that's where my focus will be when I represent you at the ADA. So do, do any of you have any questions for me? Who's my last name? E-N-S-L-I-N. -S and I always tell people, I'm like the diabetic insulin when we sweet. <laughs> so you remember that. Thank you. And I want to thank you for letting me Where take Where do you live now? We live, uh, we go to Dumont, and yeah. then you take that road to Austinville, mm -hmm. you go to the cemetery, and we farm west of there, about oh, five miles west of there. So I'm kind of a retired farm hand. Grandpa got too old because he kept ripping out fences, and so now I got grandpa's staff. And I'm able to and the, the mower, I know a lot. So, but anyway, thank you for letting me come and take your time and have a good summer. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, board items of discussion. Um, um, go ahead. I have not gotten an update from Tim Shraggy since he acknowledged the acceptance of the offer on the property after the last board meeting. I emailed him with him. Accept his offer pending that he did survey it with his original offer. And I have not heard back from him since he emailed that. Um, at the Allison building, we got some corners that are settling. I did get a quote on those from Randall Construction. I marked through that. And they're going to come and fix the two worst ones right away. And I will have Lucas get down and take a look at those. And it looks like the water just stayed underneath and they settled. And I didn't know that there was more. I saw the two, but um, Randall said that there were five more. So I'll have the, cor at the corners of the building, um, the ground has settled underneath. Wild wash them a little way, and the whole corner of the building has sagged and broken the bricks out. Oh, okay. the wall. Right. So, is it just the bricks, or like the walls and floors? I think like I think it's just the bricks on the outside, okay. as far as I can see. And they came and looked and said, "Mark the quote." So, it's twenty-two bucks, twenty-two hundred bucks a corner. For the ones that are doing right now. And then you jack them up and fill back in underneath them somehow? Yeah, right now they're trying to match the bricks. Um, and it hasn't like sagged enough that you think it's causing structural like No, I don't I don't think that I don't think that part would, is able to cause structural damage. I think it'd have to undermine quite a bit more than what it has. Um, it was brought to my attention. Um, Mrs. Trollson got something actually about okay. Andrew back there. Yeah, it was up, but there's just there's a big gap in I don't know if it started with Um, baseball's at St. Astor tonight to play Janesville. They were supposed to start at 5. They backed it up to 6, but it was raining at St. Astor at 4.30. So they're supposed to start at 6 o'clock here, and um, that is a regional game. Um, yesterday, I met with what I call the cabinet, which would be the head of the departments and the admin team to make sure that we get things straightened out before school starts, um, to make sure we get everything on the same page, letters that got to go out with all the yearly notices in it, uh, calendars, <coughs> the activities calendar that goes out, make sure that everybody's on the same page with where we're prioritizing jobs and all those things. Are we having a good look at filling the jobs? Everything's filled except for, well, the email I sent you guys today. 
um, in Spanish, we use none. Mm -hmm. And it's, we'll probably have to do that by already online. So, we had a Spanish position? Or? We had one, it wasn't. It's, it's better to put the subpar teacher in and then have to deal with that down the road. What about like parts of the Spanish teacher? Is that something we can share? Yeah, cool. no, I have talk, I have talk, no, everybody's Spanish programs are full time. I don't know if that's going to be that to do. We've had to, we're probably going to have to ship a kid to Charles City to get ELL services because we don't have an ELL teacher over there. <coughs> English language learners, ESL, their own language is Spanish. What about the kids that want to take Spanish? Can they go to Charles City? No, we have a teacher over there, but he's not licensed to do ELL. Being licensed to teach Spanish and, and ELL are two different things. No, but they have a Spanish teacher over there. Yeah, but he's in, in the school. I, I know Heather and uh, Mr. Ryder talked about that. So. It would be something we could, I don't know if we explored fully like sending kids elsewhere, but if we offered on, or could we look at, explore that a little bit more? To it see might be, could, it'd be pretty difficult at this point because everybody's schedules are set. So we'd have to, we'd have to redo the whole schedule here to work around somebody else's schedule. Right. So. I guess in my mind, it's hard to learn a second language, so, I mean, Well, but Mrs. Mrs. Holmes, Mrs. Mrs. Holmes licensed in Spanish, so she'll be around to help kids have any questions. Yeah, that's just too bad for a kid, though, if you have any questions. But if you only apply, it's hard to fill the position. Yeah, I mean, you can't fill the position without Yeah, barring the candidates. Yeah, just... I think we're just putting one body in there to deal with issues down the road. I think if there were kids that wanted to, or I mean, if it worked with their schedule, like I think other, like Clarksville, I think they do allow kids to, you know, get tuition and go to like wait really for different classes or whatever, you know, if it worked with the schedule. But I think logistically it'd be hard yeah, for them. It'd be really difficult them. because then they're- It would take a lot of time to- uh, there for a class and driving for at least another class period, maybe two. Right. Uh, probably at least two can down each way. Yep. Unless, Unless it's like the first, first hour of the day. It was yeah. first hour. Yeah, first or last hour yeah. or something. Is that offered through the right It's through Iowa Learning Online. It's uh, something the state uses for small schools to meet their uh, accreditation requirements now. The state's changed the rules on that. So if small schools don't have, can't find a foreign language teacher or an English teacher or anything <coughs> else, then they're able to I just feel a little bit out of loop on some of the stuff like the negotiation stuff and Bobby and I are in the negotiations committee and you kind of handled that and mm -hmm. you know we never got updates or what was going on there at the end. You know we're busting his jobs about communication stuff so I guess you know why why weren't we kept in loop on some of that stuff is my question. I think you know in the end it was whoever could make it that's how we or in the beginning the first meeting was Lori myself right and Mr. Foster and then you kind of came in at a, another meeting and then I think we were in the loop because we always we talked at the meeting and we stuck with the program and we had that separate meeting with uh, um, I'm trying to think Mr. Foster the attorney myself and you and yep. then we had Lori on the phone and we never changed the plan after that. But, but I guess I didn't find out about that we had, had a tentative agreement until we got that meeting here a week or so ago. Uh -huh. You know, we could have sent out an email and said, hey, you know, we got something going, you know, or tentatively solved. 
Right. You know, I guess just so we're in the loop. Yeah, sure. We you know, kind, of, kind of like the letter we got from the attorney, we, you know, round out about at the meeting, you know, a week ago, you know, it would have been nice to know, hey, maybe that was in the works and, you know, we at least could have not been surprised at the meeting with it. And that's all I can say about that because, of, you know, being a closed meeting. But mm -hmm. I guess it'd just be nice to have a little more communication also. Sure. You know, if that stuff's going on. Yeah. Um, we can send out more emails, you know, with trying to do and, the best we yeah can. And, and i don't see emails. To, you know usually a text or a call for me is a lot better because i'm not around email that sure. much i should so. definitely send you more text messages as things Perfect. come through the phone no, i appreciate it yeah for sure all right anybody else got anything all right ipad resolution and training on May 31st, 2019, Joel Foster filed a formal complaint against the North Butler Community School District alleging a violation of Iowa Code Chapter 21. The complaint alleged that the school district violated Chapter 21 of the Iowa Code by amending the agenda during a meeting to conduct an open session with substantive discussion while giving fewer than 24 hours notice. The IPIM board accepted the complaint on June 20th, 2019. Pursuant of Iowa Code 23.9, the parties negotiated and reached an informal resolution. The parties agreed to the school district will acknowledge on May 30th, the agenda was amended during the meeting without 24 hours notice, without providing a reason for the amendment. The reason is required by Iowa Code 21.42B. Second thing, the school district will approve this informal resolution at the open meeting and include it in the minutes for that meeting. And then the third thing, the school district will provide all elected officials and appropriate employees with copies of the IPIP Sunshine Law, PowerPoint slides in print at uh, that following address I'm not going to read. The school district shall conduct training for all board members on Iowa Code Chapter 21 and 22. And this part doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but the city may utilize, I think it should say the school may utilize the PowerPoint training available on IPIB website or schedule training through the Iowa Association of School Boards, which can be found at the following website. So, I need a motion to acknowledge this complaint. Second. Any motion and Shelly has the slides printed off for everyone. And then after the meeting, um, go to the website and watch the training. And then at the next meeting, we'll have, and Mr. Foster, you will too, um, we'll have a, a page and we'll all sign it that we actually, you know, read them over. And so at the beginning of the, our meetings, when we say if we're going to agenda and make changes, we need to make changes before we're not supposed to be doing that. When we give a reason for it, but it can't wait for them to death. We, we, we have to give a reason. What, like, change. what would be like a good reason? Something that needs to get done, and it's not, we can't wait 30 days till the next board meeting. Maybe we got a great applicant for our same institution that came in this afternoon, yeah. so we'd make a change to prove that. So that would be okay to change you right now, right. Yeah, because yeah. otherwise, if you take a chance of losing the candidate, <coughs> Did something signed like a yeah. contract for a job? Perfect emergency comes up and yep. you need a contractor to come in and fix yep. something right away. Like if the air conditioning went out in my office. That's <laughs> 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 the emergency. Or, or, no. or, 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 or like during a flood or something times. like that. I think in the past we've done it frequently and I think there was some confusion around that. So I think we have to be more careful about that and we shouldn't really be doing it very often. I think it's a good I think it's always good to refresh on you know what the laws are and make sure that everybody is aware of you know um, what open meetings are and that we are operating on the basis of the elected by public the public we work for the public and so everything we're doing we want to make sure our public people are aware of what's going on and we really think that way 
So I think it's a good refresher and fair for us to so do. Is there a handout that I'll need to pick up from someone? Yes. I can get it to you. If or you can download it off the board website. I have it posted on there as well, sure. Lori. Okay. Yeah, it's yeah. just a PowerPoint. All right, thank you. <clears throat> so did we get a motion to second? Okay. Second? No. Oh. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay, next is the milk and bread beds. Um, we only got two dairy beds, uh, Anderson Erickson Dairy and Prairie Farms. Um, they're pretty close, and I believe we've used Anderson Erickson for quite a while. Um, Prairie Farms does not provide straws or give credit for outdated product, um, where Anderson Erickson does, and we've been really good about working with some stuff this hour and things like that. So I would recommend that we look at Anderson Erickson as it hasn't had in the past. So they do give credit for, for rotten milk. Yep. I'll make a motion to stay with Anderson Erickson. Hang on, are, are they the ones, sorry. Are they the ones with the moldy bread too? No. Are we going with them for bread or we're doing bread bits separate? Bread bits is separate. Okay. Yeah. It's on the same page. It's on the same page. But no, it's on the same page. Oh, are you going to do that? Same right? Okay. okay. Um, and then bed, bread bits, we only got one bit back now from Biden Gold Bakeries. So I'd recommend that we approve that one. And is that the one you normally use? Uh -huh. That's the only one we use. That's the only one we use. Do they credit us back for multi bread? Yes. So I'll make a motion to approve Dembo Bakeries and Anderson Erickson. Derek. Second. I'll second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Approve school fees. Um, because the way the law is written, you know, uh, we do not need to raise our lunch fees because we have more than three months reserved in our nutrition programs. Um, we are required by law to raise the adult fees, so my recommendation is that the only fee that we raise would be the adult lunch from 370 to 375. And then, oh yeah. Um, Activity oh yeah, activity tickets, sorry. Um, I recommend that we raise those. Our activity accounts have been very negative. We've had a lot of issues, so I would recommend that we raise those from 30 to 40 for students. Um, adults for 10, the 10 punch be 40 to 50, and then senior citizens 35 to 45. So I would recommend that we make those adjustments. Um, they haven't been changed, prices on the activity tickets haven't been changed since I've been here. Is that comparable to other schools around us? It's actually we're a, little a little low. So, but we don't want to jump too much more here. Right. I need a motion to approve the fee. Motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Approve return to play policy. And this is a long one, so I don't expect you to read it, but this is what comes from the Athletic Association and the National Federation of High Schools. Um, basically, it's laid out that with all the definitions of interscholastic activities, and it has protocol laid out for students to return to play. Um, basically, we're going to go through a six-step process before they are allowed to participate back in, in an activity, and they have to receive a written clearance from the doctor to even lead in those activities. <clears throat> um, I think our people have done a really nice job of monitoring our kids and making sure we get them back, but we uh, we need to have this one passed and then the return, if you remember last month we talked about the return to learn, that's not until next year, so we'll put that in place next year. Um, motion to approve the return to play policy. Second. Okay. Just making sure. You can make motions if you want to, you know. Yeah, I know. <laughs>
district develop service delivery plan and committee? Um, the district develop service delivery plan is basically we have a committee that's put together, um, this admin team, um, Jody Alberts from the AA, Robin Morton from the AA, Katie Devereaux, Angie, Angie Duke from the AA, school counselor, um, special ed teachers and parents. Um, they sat down and went through our service delivery plan. Um, I wasn't able to attend because I was out of district when they were doing it. And then it went on the district website for comment and then they finished the plan. And I would recommend that we... Uh, Is that the one where the teachers have listed? Well, yeah, the teacher, there's some... There's some that are no longer with us. That's what I was wondering if we should change the names before or before we approve it or... Well, this is, this is the this is the group that was together for this last school year that, that did it, okay. and we just we just need to approve it because the Ms. Holman tried to force to approve it for her. It was okay. it was a. Uh, so this is a budget year. No, this will be this will be for this was for last year. It, it only has to be done every five years. Okay. We'll point different people for yeah. the next time because I think. The other question I have, because there's two people, I think there's two people that don't work here anymore, and then we have Emily well, Asher as a parent, and she also works in the school, so I don't know if you actually want to parent, I mean, she's both. Well, it's easier to get both when they're both. Um, but also, the AEA people, um, half the AEA people that are on here are going to be in our district this year either, so they're going to be assigned. So if it has to be every five years, should we just wait till it's corrected, or has it been five years? That it's been five years, years, and we need to improve it. They, I mean, they did it. They did it all the right way. It's just that we need to approve that committee to make sure that it went through the plan because that's the committee that we worked the plan for. Us. That's just part of all of it that has to be done for us. I make a motion to approve the um, development service delivery plan in the committee. Just one more question though, like we continually probably develop as a development group. So do you think that we will nominate or reappoint people yeah, sometime this people year? Probably not this year, probably be. It, it, if needs change, then we'll have to sit down and go through it. But usually it's, it's a five year process where then we have to have that group together for one every five years. So we'll have like three or two or three. I was just concerned when you, we have a group of people on here. But, but they, they went through it already. And they've done yeah, their thing. I think that's just so, so we know so that, that we're just they'll be people there what they've too. done yeah. at this point. Okay. 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 You made a motion. Second? Second. All in favor say aye. All right. Aye. Motion carries. Okay. Approved vision and mission draft. Um. That's down, down there is the North Butler Strategic Plan 2019-24. Uh, That's the draft that we've been working on with the AEA since we uh, had a professional development for back on January 2nd. Um, both, uh, leadership team at the building center and we have come up with different collective commitments for each building and I would recommend that we improve that draft. What is it? What's it called? It's called it's North Butler, 2019 North Butler Strategic Plan. It's the second oh, got it. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, it took me a while for you too. But the quality moved a little bit closer to Joel. Yep. I'll read the basic That's something part I of it very since often. you guys can't see it in the audience. It just says that the vision is education to meet tomorrow's challenges. The mission of North Butler Community School District is to ensure a safe, positive, and student-centered learning environment which empowers all students to achieve lifelong personal excellence. And I'll just read the core values and leave the rest off, but core values would be the Bearcat way, which is be kind, be respectful, be responsible, and be safe. Integrity, follow the Bearcat way even when it's difficult. Excellence, strive to be your best and continue to grow. Empathy, understand and be sensitive to others' backgrounds and feelings. And I think it kind of, I think some of you were there when we did that, but it, but really the strategy behind developing this plan was also trying to be more student-centric with our values and goals instead of thinking about it at, from adult perspective. I mean, it goes both ways, but we really want to focus mostly on the students 
and bring all the values and beliefs up through the students and all of us resemble these um, goals and values and missions and I thought I think they did a really good job when I read through especially being involved in the process with everybody it was really positive and I think the goals are right on in my opinion program that we've been using for Title I. We've not had the complete program. Um, we're changing Title I teachers and between them and Mrs. Tracy, uh, Mrs. Endelman, they thought it would be good that we had the entire program and actually this is a it's an update to get us through grades four and five. So we had uh, K3 but we didn't have grades four and five if I remember correctly. Um, the merchandise price is forty nine fifty, which I could have approved, and the shipping takes it up over five thousand dollars. So that's why I brought the report, and that would be that'll come out of Title One funds. And it consists of like what books? Um, it's got nine different cartons. It's got books. It's got testing supplies. Is what I understand. Everything you can need. I think there's even some iPad items that go with it. Any motion to approve? I gold. Second motion. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Approved curriculum items. A family consumer science textbooks. Um with new teacher coming in, she's requested that we get some family consumer science textbooks. Price on those textbooks for what she needs is $8,453. And then the Renaissance renewal is $9,757.50. And that, that covers, um, uh, I think, Star Reading, um, uh, what's the other one? AR, Accelerated Reader Stuff. And those things. On family consumer science, do we have books in there? currently or what are they being received? If, if they are, they're probably pretty old. Um, I, I think Mary's been just teaching from the things that were in her skill set. I don't believe there's any textbooks at all in there. So what, what kind of things are in these books? Like how to sell basic stuff? I have I haven't seen it. I would I would assume it covers everything from from cooking and sewing, um, uh, child child rearing. They have all those things that are included in the curriculum. How many books does that cover? Because do we even I don't have that. Kids are I don't have that information. So we have we have there's a price for eight thousand. Do you know how many books that covers? I don't have I don't have the quote of what Mrs. Edelman how I got the purpose email with the total price. Is it their junior uh, is it required for junior high? Um, they, do, they, do, they, do, they do exploratories. Um, we're required by law to have exploratories in the uh, in the career education development areas. Guaranteed number of students. So, what what is that? A seventh and eighth graders have to take it? They're required by law to have me in there, so they have so paid for six weeks. These books would cover them plus in high school. I, I don't know the answer to that. That'd be a question you can send to Mrs. Edelman. Any table this time, or do you guys have to ask some more questions? I guess my only question would be timing to get them here. You know, time for her class this fall. Yeah. You know, if we don't want to do it now, we wait a month. You know, they're in August, and she's going to want to use them. Then she's going to need time to prepare out of them. Okay, we should probably, you know, need a guideline 
to teach, probably it'll be helpful. And we know I don't, there's a guaranteed number of students, which I, I don't, I mean, I don't think they'd be asking for something that they didn't need. And I how know many they, the kids all went through how, registered how in, many in spring. So. And there might be, there could be other life skills in those books, you know, like even balancing the checkbook. It's just yeah, hard to know what no the idea. curriculum really is because there's a lot of subcategories that can fall under family and consumer science so without us seeing the text. Not, not put her on the spot, but she'd be a prime candidate to come in and talk to the board about that. Yeah. yeah. I agree. Um, so, I mean, I'm, I'm fine with what you guys want to do. I'll second Bobby's motion. To purchase that stuff. <laughs> okay. Will you next? I'm just out the teacher. Just give us more information. Yeah. Usually, usually I get more than just an email with the total, with the total prices. Usually I get the quote. Right. I didn't get it this time. So I think That's they fine. were. I think they were pretty late. I think the vendors were pretty late getting the uh, things to Mrs. Emma because I just got this email late yesterday. Okay. All right. So that was a motion and a second. <laughs> sure. All for it. Sort of sounds like to me. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. Chromebook purchase. Um, the Chromebook renewal <laughs> purchase for <laughs> elementary. Um, we're looking at 50 units at, at $207.35 a piece. And then the Google Chrome management console, which we have to have, I think it's $25.27. Um, the total is $11,631, and that would be one cent sales tax for that. I need a motion to approve the Chromebooks. And the Chromebooks, I'm sorry, this is for replace ones we've already have for the, the program. Then so we rolled out, yep. Rolled out. Yep. Okay. What are we doing for what they rolled out? Um, we either can sell them to the public or we can sell them back to the vendor and keep some of the parts. And that's one cent sales pack. Yeah. I think we, we robbed some of them for parts, right, Melissa? The Chromebooks? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Or could we do the same? I mean, the Chromebooks stay with the student, right? They get them in. Not in the lower grades. No, they, they don't. They, they go stay to part. In the same no. class. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know if it was, it was like the iPad or I mean, MacBooks. Um, in the upper grades, they assign them to the kids, so it's easier to keep track of if they're taking care of them or not because they get a little bit rougher with them. But in the younger classes, they stay in the car. So. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve the Chromebooks. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. Approve iPad purchase. Um, iPads, the iPads that we have at the elementary um, actually go clear back to the uh, old charger. They don't have the lightning charger on them, they're so weird. And a lot of them have become non functional. Uh, Mrs. Tracy would like to replace, replace those. Um, but we've got a, a quote for 16 10 packs at $3,730 a piece. Um, that extended price is $59,680. Um, they have quoted with a case. It would save us almost $6,000 if we didn't order the cases with them. And those stay in the park, so the cases aren't, aren't necessarily a necessity. Do they fit? Like, do the old iPads have cases? Would they fit in the same case? I don't. I don't think they do have cases. I think they just sit in the car. What do you mean? would be the little kid, you know, like they take them on the car and drop them. Yeah. It might be better than cases. What are they so expensive for? What grade? It's for K2, where we don't have the Chromebooks. So what what do they do with them? What are they um, They do a lot of things. They use them for what they seesaw thing that they use to communicate with parents now. Um, they do assessments on them. reading assessments that we do, they can do on them. Um, the seesaw, I know, is, is the seesaw they can take video of the kids actually doing stuff and then it's available to the parents right away as the kids are doing it on there so the parents can actually see what they're doing. So that price is only for 16? It's for 16 10 packs. So, 10 so it's 160 of them. Um, you need one, it's a good time to buy them. No, it's a good time to buy one if you need one. <laughs> <laughs> well, you just and that, that does include iPads for the teachers also. Do we need that many though, honestly? Um, it's for teachers. It's for K two, so we're looking at 120 kids and 20 some teachers, and then a few extras. So, yeah. 
if you're not having every kid, I mean, it's every kid in every classroom, or do the carts get shared? The cart, the carts will stay in the classrooms. Okay, so they are. So, but but yeah, it'll be for each classroom. We'll have to have a selection of iPads. We ran into some issues with that last year when it came to testing time. Not having enough. Yeah. And have a few extras, you know, if you have issues with one or something like on testing day, that you know, way you've got, yep. you know, hopefully you enough extras to sign an issue. Or you got some, if you got to send one into the AAs, you fixed. But. but do the kids actually take the test by themselves or doesn't somebody administer it? You know, like the old kids, I don't think they're all taking the test at the same time. But, they, but they'll use them in the whole classroom at the same time for, for different things. Okay. So. What fund does that come out of? It'll be a couple of ones on sales tax. I looked at that before. We, I think 250, 119. So we have like 375,000 right now. Yeah, and if we take out 11, 7,000, no, the two together. The two together because it can come out of either. Oh, it can come out of. So if we add. Even have more one cent sales tax. Yeah, like 20. Do you have one cent sales tax listed as the capital project? That's the same. That's us. Uh, Shelly has on the uh, sheet of silo, I believe. Oh, that's what they used to call it. What was right now we're looking at? Yeah, capital projects. A hundred thousand dollars for all for all the expenses that we're looking at tonight. Hundred thousand, a little more probably. And we have two forty four hundred. There's oh, between the two. There's about three hundred and seventy thousand. Hundred and five thousand, let's say, because of the. Um, building improvements, the $2,200 per corner, I did add that on. Okay. We don't have any big building projects or anything. We don't have any really big bills to come out of that until the end of the year when we pay the, <coughs> the, uh, pay the bond down for this and the less paper. And property tax comes in? Mm -hmm. Well, sales tax comes in monthly, and then property tax comes in uh, September and March, right? Okay. October. Well, we... I think I'm so confused. Okay, I'm she says it's listed on the side, but it's side. Silo's not on her. She's got it listed as saved as capital projects. Capital projects, yeah. Capital projects, yeah. You did change the word. We also talked about the um, school parking lot. Do we still need to do something with that? Um, we need to have some discussion about that. You guys are going to have to decide which one to do somewhere else. Is that would also come out of keys? Yes. Okay. Yep. And I, I got an email back from from the you know, make an offer if you don't want to ask for that property over there. So we might talk about that at some point too. I think the good thing about the iPad purchase is we haven't made one in a long or I mean the scene is a little bit larger, but we have not updated those, you know, we're we're kind of Every year we're doing those other devices, so I think it would be a purchase we make this year and we wouldn't make it yeah, for a few years. Probably four, yeah. four or five years, probably. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I need a motion to approve the iPads. I'll second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Master's contract for fiscal year 20. Um, I'd recommend that we approve the master contract as negotiated with the NBEA. Any questions? Basically, the master contract is going to stay very similar to what it was with the removal of the language that had to be per. Um, legislative recommendations <coughs> or law, I should say, not just recommendations. Also the, yeah, the law required it to be removed. The leave of absence was taken out of the master contract and also the grievance uh, level four was taken out of the contract, which means that um, the any grievance would end at the superintendent level and would not go on to arbitration. And this was what was agreed upon by the teachers? Yeah. The board. And the uh, leaves will be in the handbook, along with the other permissive, I think, it's appropriate, items. So that's basically what 
came out with uh, research from other schools, our attorneys, and a meeting with the association. And, this, and also we did add $500 to the base yeah, here and, and step away. And I know we had discussed a little bit about changing the salary schedule, but that's all staying the same. Like yep. steps and lanes, there's no change to that. Here. I need a motion to approve the contract. I make a motion. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Certified staff handbook. Um, like Liz said before, a certified staff handbook is basically the things that were taken out of a master contract by law or by agreement. And we did add the cell phone policy. So at the end there, we added a page that basically has a law, what FLMLA is, then just it's clear, basically. And then the other thing we had discussed is there was different concerns that have spanned across the years, basically about cell phone usage. So that'd be a new thing not necessarily new, I think it maybe was talked about, but it's actually going to be a policy that anyone driving a school vehicle is not allowed to talk, text, or anything while they're driving. And I, in the same policy, it also says that you could be, it could be grounds for termination if you are reported to be talking, texting, or any of those sorts. So while that you're expands from school buses to school vehicles. So school vehicles for all employees. All employees driving. It's in all the. It's in the classified handbook too. So the same policies yep. in the classified and certified handbook. So it applies to everybody. And I think you were to send out the contracts. I am. I'm going to send the letter that the, the part where they sign it and send it back with the contracts. Right. And it looked like yeah, everybody was going to see it and have a chance to read it and sign it and return it. And the other thing under professional aid that I saw was that we added a little clause in there that says state tournament attendance will not be granted as professional days. Teams must qualify to attend state tournaments as a school sponsored activity. And that is something that I, I put in there because it's some issue that we've had and if you guys don't agree with it, we can take that up. I think we definitely need some clarification around it. Either we would allow it or, or not. not. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's one of those things that they would allow a professional day for a coach to go down and watch a state tournament, even if it wasn't our team going. I mean, I do see some benefits that I could provide, but I mean, I don't know, is that a professional day or not? I guess that's kind of a great thing because we look at professional days more towards the educational side than we do the athletic side. So, if you all agree with the additions, and we would. With, with that, uh, I guess what we would do is we would allow them to take a personal day, and if they wanted to, if the team wanted to go, then we would rent them a vehicle like we do with other activities with that. So they would just pay for the fuel, basically, and would cover the drivers. So if the staff took a team, even though the team wasn't in the tournament, they would have to take a personal day. Well, but then they would still have to take students, or if they want to take students, then they just take a personal day. So just still taking a personal plate, even if they take students. Yes. Yep. I think that's great. Yeah, I don't think they have the responsibility then. Okay. Well, I, just, I, I think that's a decision that they'd have to make. Depends on how bad they want to go with the students. Yep. Yeah. But we need to we need to make sure that we're prior, prioritizing the educational piece because we are cutting school days. About 10 days out of school here. I'll make a motion to approve that Second. Second that. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. Certified staff contracts. Okay. Classified handbook. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Who classified staff handbook? Um, classified handbook I believe is the same as what we had last year for the most part mm -hmm. um, there are some a couple of small adjustments we clarified the uh, language on the uh, family leave um, and we added the uh, we 
added the, the clause on cell phones. I noticed the secondary high school positions since said 12 months to try to corrected. Um, oh, yeah, I'll, page I'll, number oh, 10. I'll correct that. Okay. I'll correct. Okay, you got it. Thanks. All right, any other questions? Any motion to approve the classified staff handbook? I'll make a motion. Second. I'll second. Second. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Approved certified staff contracts. This is just a uh, formality. Then, uh, I believe Shelly's giving you a listing of the certified staff. Not we have not. Okay. No. Uh, we just need to approve the contracts so that are ready to go out. Okay. It's, it's the continuing contracts and then the, the new ones that we've approved in other meetings. Sorry. We're going to approve the administrator contracts for, for the raise of 2.59. Now, administrator, sorry, who, who all is included in this? Can you say that? The principals. The principals, the principals and myself. And Beth. And Beth. For the raise. <clears throat> Yes, you're making a motion? Yeah. 
Um, it's going to drop because it, we don't have a second. Okay. Great. So I guess it's a uh, table. Is that what you do? No, or it's not it table. just doesn't right. pass. It just doesn't pass. No, no. Right. I guess can we revisit that after we have our um, closed session? Um, no. No. We'll have another meeting. Okay. Because we will not amend any agendas outside of the 24-hour notice because it's not an emergency. So we'll have another. Well, we just changed the um, order of the agenda. We're not changing anything on the agenda. I don't feel comfortable order. doing <laughs> that. I okay. will not do it. Okay, I was asking. The, the <clears throat> agenda should have been prepared that way. <laughs> so the answer is no. We either pass it or we don't. But. In the past, just for history, usually the um, administrator or the superintendent contract has been negotiated separately. So we've always done that at a different time frame and we've always just approved the raises at the time. So it would be nothing different this year than <coughs> any other time for more clarification on that issue or non-issue. I don't really know what to say on that, but um, that's usually how, like if we look at our, um, Minutes from July of 2018, and that's what we had. We had approved only a raise for the superintendent and nothing more. If that helps or changes anything for anybody. But um, it will let it drop and we'll revisit it at the next. We can add another meeting if we need to. Um, in a week or whatever. We'll just have another meeting with that topic on it. All right. So, um, personnel, number 23. I didn't see any listed on the agenda. Okay, we have no personnel items. So, um, next item is a closed session, which I need a motion for someone to read. Uh, I think a motion to go to closed session uh, for 21. Point five I to value professional competency of an individual whose appointment, hiring, performance, or discharge is being considered unnecessary to prevent needless and irreparable injury to that individual's reputation, and that that individual requests a closed session. Um, I need a second. Do that I'll second. And roll call. Bob? Yes. Liz? Yes, Lori? Yes. Thank you everyone for coming.